Here's a place where you can take comfort in the knowing that whether if you come to stay a while or just passing through, this door is open to you. Come and let's be silent. Come and share a hug. Come, let's pray together. Come love and be loved From the blessed out to the turned out From the pampered to the abused This door is open to you Come on in Reminded of who we come to be. We are love, we are one, one big family. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. Everybody get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Everybody you meet, let us be reminded of who we've come to be. We are love, we are one, one big family. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. All right. Let us make a joyful sound. Here we stand on holy ground. Let us make a joyful sound. Here we stand on holy ground. on your feet, see the light in everybody you meet, yeah. everybody get up on your feet, see the light in everybody you meet, let us be reminded of who we come to be, we are love, we are one, one big family, hey. Sound. Here we stand on holy ground. Let us make a joyful sound. Here we stand on holy ground. Let us make a joyful sound. Hey, 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 hey. everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Hey, hey. everyone. Welcome to Unity Renaissance. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online this morning. Boy, it feels good to be together, doesn't it? This was a really big week. Queen Elizabeth died. Aw. I know, right? What an icon. An incredible example of selfless service for over 70 years. And isn't it true that the world already, already feels a little bit different without her in it. It's funny how one person can influence so much our concept of who we are, our connection with one another. We just send up a blessing of gratitude to you, Queen Elizabeth, for your love, for your integrity, for your leadership. And today, of course, is the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks here in our own country. 21 years. That's so hard to believe, isn't it? And even still, we look at those images and 
think back on that day and it all feels very fresh. Our hearts hurt all over again. So today is a day to take just a few moments to remember that time and to send a blessing out, to send love out to those who lost their lives, to those who lost their loved ones. And I would even say send a blessing out to our entire country that we remember that as a time when we came together, when we remembered our oneness and that we need each other. Good lessons for today. And so it feels particularly good to be together in spiritual community this morning. Well, unity is positive, practical, progressive Christianity. We follow the teachings and the example of our way shower, Jesus, in seeking to more fully love ourselves, love God, and love one another. And from that beautiful consciousness of love here at Unity, we honor all paths to God, all names for God, and all expressions of God. And each and every single one of you and you is an expression of God. That's the truth, that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. When we awaken to that truth, it changes everything. And as we learn how to tap into that divine light within us, that essence of who we are, as we behold that light in one another, it just grows and grows. And it shines out ever more brightly to light up the world. Our vision at Unity Renaissance is, together, a spiritually awakened world, living in peace, love, and joy. And we are manifesting that vision through our mission, which is, say it like you mean it, together, we transform lives that transform the world. Yes, and we see that happen all the time here, do we not? We feel that within us. What a beautiful blessing. Let's take that thought into our opening prayer. I invite you to get comfortable in your seat, breathing in deeply. Ah, this amazing sacred energy that we experience here in the sanctuary, that we experience when we come together. Sweet Spirit, we are so grateful to be together this morning, thinking back on previous times, giving thanks for those who have served in our country and in our world. We are so grateful for the way being paved for us to rise up in consciousness, to be all that we can be. We are inspired by the late Queen Elizabeth. We are inspired by the first responders on 9-11. We are inspired by those around us, the lessons of everyday life. So we just take a moment this morning just to be in silence for a short while particularly to send love and blessings to all those affected by 9-11, including ourselves. Send forth our love. Most of all, send forth our intentions for an awakened world, for learning from this and emerging from it stronger and more unified for a few moments in the silence.
Richard, did I see you wrote that song? That is beautiful. That's the first time I've heard that. Such amazing talent here at Unity Renaissance, you know, and and it feels, you know, deep and connected right now. You know, usually I'm my enthusiastic self, but right now it feels like this is the time to be connected and unified and appreciating and putting forth peace at, into the world. And that was a beautiful way of doing it. So thank you. Um, so I am Heidi Kohlberg. I am a grateful, peace-filled member of Unity Renaissance. And it is a true joy to be at home with our spiritual family today. So thanks to each and one of you here in the room and to each and every one of you out there, you know, um, watching online too for being a part of this experience. Our word for today is remembrance. Please join me in our affirmation. Together, you live in my heart. Whether they have passed on recently or many years ago, the people for whom I have cared deeply are alive in my heart. If I feel sad or lonely for those I miss, I pause to recall a special memory or something unique about them that made even ordinary days feel magical. Reflecting on the love and joy we shared and their blessings their love afforded me, I feel comforted. I am thankful that these memories will always be mine to treasure. I know that life does not end with death. Life is eternal and my loved ones will always be beautiful beloved expressions of spirit. I am grateful those who have passed from this life experience continue to live in spirit and are forever in my heart. Our scripture verse is from Psalm chapter 112, verse 6. For the righteous will never be moved, 
they will be remembered forever. If you'd like prayer support today, we have multiple ways to offer that to you. For those who are here in person, we have prayer chaplains available to pray out with you after the service. And would our prayer chaplain please stand? Yay, we have Sam and, and back there. All right, we've got two. So they will be available after the service in the chapel, which is right out that left door past the bookstore. So that's one way that you can have prayer support. Alternative ways are to fill out a prayer request form um, from the table that's right next to the chapel, or you can submit a prayer request online at unityrenaissance.org, or you may call Silent Unity, Unity's 24-7 prayer ministry at 1-800-NOW-PRAY, and I have to cheat for this part, 1-800-669-7729. Now, and would everyone please stand and join in the Lord's Psalm. Holy Creator, we praise your name.
You are not helpless. You are not free. You are not judgment. You are whole. And you are worthy. months ago I received an unexpected call from a longtime friend. He's a senior minister at one of the largest unity churches in the country. And he's been a valued mentor for me for years. One of my go-to people when I need help or advice. But this time he was calling me for support. He told me that in the aftermath of COVID, the attendance and the financial giving at his church had dropped 
by more than half. And it had caused him to really begin doubting himself. And my dear, wonderful friend, this incredibly gifted minister, said that he felt like a failure, that he felt like a fraud. I found this absolutely astonishing because it could not be further from the truth. And I told him so. But it reminded me that anyone, even the most accomplished people, can suffer from a bout of what is called imposter syndrome. How many of you have heard of imposter syndrome? Oh, a few of you. <laughs> so imposter syndrome is when someone thinks that they are not as good or smart or capable as people think they are, or perhaps as they should be, and that sooner or later, someone's going to find out. So psychologists tell us that more than 70% of us will have an episode of imposter syndrome at some point in our lives. Because it happens, it occurs across all cultures, backgrounds, genders, occupations. It happens to artists, to authors, to musicians, to ministers, to business people, to leaders, even to brain surgeons. That is not a comforting thought, is it? <laughs> The idea that a brain surgeon would feel like a fraud. Fortunately, a, pr a person's experience of imposter syndrome has absolutely nothing to do with their level of skill or ability, as was true for my minister friend. And that actually quite often these folks who have a case of imposter syndrome or an episode of it are really great at what they do. They just haven't internalized that. Right? They don't necessarily see it in themselves, even if others are seeing it in them. In her book, The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women, Valerie Young writes, Despite often overwhelming evidence of their abilities, imposters dismiss them as merely a matter of luck, timing, outside help, charm, even computer error. Have you ever done that? Have you ever tossed off a compliment? Oh, I was just lucky? You know what that's like. But really, some of the most unlikely people sometimes feel like imposters. Lady Gaga says this, I still sometimes feel like a loser kid in high school, and I just have to pick myself up and tell myself that I'm a superstar every morning so that I can get through this day and be for my fans what they need me to be. That's something, isn't it? The late great poet and author Maya Angelou said, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, uh-oh, they're going to find out now. I've run a game on everybody, and they're going to find me out. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? I think imposter syndrome is so widespread because so many of us have this idea, this belief that somehow, in some way, we're not good enough. We're not successful enough. We're not creative enough, attractive enough, spiritual enough, tough enough, smart enough, and on and on. Where do we get these incredibly destructive beliefs? Well, often we get them from someone whose opinion matters a lot to us. It could be a parent, a teacher, coach, mentor, supervisor, or another authority figure. Here are what some famous people were told by others who were close to them. Beethoven's teacher called him hopeless. As a, his teacher called him hopeless. What kind of a teacher is that? As a composer. Walt Disney was fired by a newspaper editor for his quote-unquote lack of ideas. <laughs> Albert Einstein's teacher said he was, quote, mentally slow, unsociable, and adrift forever in his foolish dreams. Albert Einstein. Heisman Trophy winner and NFL running back Herschel Walker was told by his junior high coach that he was too small and he should go out for track instead. <laughs> this one's great. After his first screen test, Fred Astaire received a memo from the MGM testing director that said, can't act, slightly bald, can dance a little. <laughs> And Rodin's father said of 
the great, amazing sculptor Rodin. I have an idiot for a son. <laughs> and finally, the manager of the Grand Old Opry fired Elvis Presley after his first performance and told him, you ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to go back to driving a truck. Thank goodness these amazing people didn't let the random of offhand comments of a few people hold them back. Look what the world would have lost. Oh my gosh. Because the problem isn't when someone labels or limits us or makes an offhand comment. The problem is when we believe them. So I grew up with a mother who loved me unconditionally and a father who didn't. My mom believed in me and she taught me that I could do anything that I set my mind to. She loved me no matter what. My father, on the, on the other hand, was very smart, often very, very funny. But my dad really didn't know how to love. I say that because more often than not, he was either unavailable or critical of me. And so I came to the conclusion that I wasn't good enough for my dad. But if I kept trying, maybe someday I would be, and I would win his love. And so I tried very, very hard on all fronts, but it seemed like the goalpost just kept moving. In 2005, at the end of my father's life, I flew to Florida to be with him, and he had become very thin and bony, he was barely eating. He was ready to die. But I really wanted those last times with him to be meaningful. And so I sat with him, and we reminisced, and we looked at old photos. I listened to all of his stories. I remember rubbing his neck and his shoulders and just feeling how bony they were. And I tried to keep him as comfortable as I could. And then one day, the ambulance came to take my father to the residential hospice facility. They have those in Florida. They're pretty amazing. And as they were loading my father into the back, and I was preparing to get into the back of the ambulance with him, he suddenly looked at me and said, you are a wonderful girl. Right? So my first thought was, well, there it is. Right? There's what I have waited to hear my entire life. And the second thought I had was, oh my goodness, I waited my entire <laughs> life to hear that. What a waste of my time and my energy, right? Trying to win his love when it turns out, I already had it. To win his approval and it turned out, I already had it. All the ways in which I tried to prove myself and be enough for him, what a waste. And then I realized not only that, but how often I had projected my father onto other people, like bosses and CEOs, and even some boyfriends. Not you. <laughs> even some boyfriends. And then I would repeat the whole story, right? because they, would, they were people who would, were withholding love. And so I would have this idea that they are, they think I'm not good enough. And so I must try harder, I would turn myself inside out to do that. You know what I realized with my father? Thank goodness. He's a human being, he was a human being just like me. He had his own history, he had his own shortcomings, his inability to express love had nothing to do with me. And after that episode with him where he expressed his feelings toward me, I said to myself, never again. Never again will I doubt my own worth or turn myself inside out to try to meet what I imagine to be somebody else's standards out there because I am enough as I am, as are you, as are you. I share this story with you today because that feeling of being inadequate, of not being able to receive the love we want, of feeling insufficient is so painful. 
and I don't want you to be in pain. I don't want that for you. You know, we all have, I think, this critical voice in our heads, right? Sort of saying things we wish we didn't have to listen to. It, it could be an outdated tape of, of something that was said in the past by a parent, a teacher, mentor, a partner, whoever it might be. Sometimes, unfortunately, we have a negative tape playing in our head because we have internalized traditional Christian dogma that says we're all miserable sinners in need of saving. Deeply internalized, one can never feel completely good about themselves. If you are one of those people who has had that experience in traditional religion, traditional Christianity, I would encourage you to pay more attention to what Jesus taught than what the traditional church codified. Because Jesus never told people they were not enough. He never saw them as not enough. He made it clear that people from all walks of life were already whole and worthy and loved. You are the light of the world, he said. And he meant all of us when he said it. As if to say, you are not just enough, you are more than enough. As we say in unity, you are the very self-livingness of God. You are God in expression. And God is not here to judge and punish you. God is here to love and encourage you. God is all for you. Amen. Pulling for you. To deeply know that can be a very healing process. But what does it take? What does it take for us to truly believe that we're enough to quiet the voice of the internal critic or whatever is telling us we're an imposter, or we're a failure, or we're a fraud. What does it take? Well, I used to believe that the only voice, really, in my head that could outweigh my father's voice was that of a highly trained therapist. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You get, to a, you get a relationship with a therapist, and you trust them, and they will tell you the truth. And suddenly it just cuts through all the you-know-what. A therapist can be a life changer. But I've come to see more recently that there is yet another voice that is even more accessible to us that can set us free. And it costs absolutely nothing. It's the voice of God within us. It's the voice of God within us. You see through prayer and meditation, through contemplation, through time and the silence. You can connect with this spiritual essence, this divine presence, whether you call it God or Jesus or divine mind or infinite intelligence, whatever it is, your higher power, whatever it is, you can connect with it. And it will soothe your hearts. And it will fuel your dreams. And it will love you like you've never felt love before, just pouring through you. Because this divine presence knows who you truly are. Amen. This divine presence is who you truly are. And it is all love, and it is all grace, and it is all beauty and peace. If you seek this presence within you, earnestly seek it. It may take some time, but if you seek this presence within you, you will find it. Seek, and you will find. And when you do, you will have discovered the greatest love, the greatest acceptance, the greatest reassurance, the greatest sense of being protected and cared for and cheered on that you could ever imagine. So there's an exercise I'd like to use. This has been pretty remarkable in my life, so I'm going to offer it to you. And you may have done this already. But it's a way to sort of connect with that, your own inner voice, kind of like Boyd, what Boyd was singing earlier, right? The voice within you that says you're the way of God. You're not weak. You're strong, etc. You sit down, create a little quiet space for yourself. 
and you start by writing a letter to God. God, Jesus, infinite mind. You pick whatever works for you. And in that letter, hold forth. Let it come. Whatever you're feeling, whatever doubts you're having about yourself, whatever insecurities you have, whatever questions you have, put them out there. Just put them out there. Write it all down. You're not going to show this to anybody. This is for you. And then wait. Just sit for a little bit and wait. And then write a letter to you from God. Dear Penny, dear Richard, dear Lisa, right? Love God. Open yourself up to whatever flows through you, whatever higher wisdom wants to speak to you. And you may just be amazed at what comes pouring out on the page, your own innate wisdom that you forgot you had. And all of a sudden you're thinking, where did that come from? That's just what I most needed to hear. It's a beautiful way to reconnect with the truth of who you are. There's a wonderful quote from, i got to see her name to remember it, Macrina Beiderker, who said, Oh God, help me believe the truth about myself, no matter how beautiful it is. <laughs> So here's the beautiful truth. You are each in your own exquisite way, a unique expression of God. You are more than capable enough. You are more than beautiful enough. You are more than talented enough. You are more than loved enough to go out and live a glorious, fulfilling life. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom because you deserve it. Let's turn now to our meditation. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to own that. <laughs> All right, let's take a moment to turn within. Take a nice, big, deep breath in. <sighs> Release and let it go. And just feel a good Mother Earth beneath your feet. And feel beautiful, sacred energy enfolding you, and comforting you, loving you, pulling for you. Just breathing in, feel yourself begin to relax and let go. Let go and let go. I so invite you in this meditation to open the way for a connection with divine love. Perhaps there is something weighing on your heart. Perhaps you have a question about your future. Perhaps you are just simply needing a sense of reassurance. Breathe into the spaciousness of the presence of God within you. If you have a question or a concern, speak it to that higher presence within you in the silence and listen for your answer.
turning now from this time of communion with the inner presence that is the truth of us. We remember that we can do this at any time when the voices in our head are causing us pain can return to the love of God within us and find peace. We practice it over and over and over again. And for this truth and for this empowering understanding, for this knowing that we can release our burdens, stand tall and free, we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. To our love offering, it is time for the sharing of our financial gifts and support of Unity Renaissance. There are many ways to make a contribution here. You can go on our website if you like and give via credit card or debit card. You can go to the Tithely app. makes things very convenient. If you're here in the room and would like to leave a check or cash, you may do so in the back uh, of the sanctuary. There's a basket there. The easiest way to give these days is by using your smartphone. You simply text the word GIVE and thereafter the amount you wish to contribute to the number. I invite you to hold your gift in your hand and let's bless it with our offertory blessing. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Give and it's given back to you. Give and it's given back to you. Give and it's given back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Back in good measure, it's given back to you.
are incredible, so unforgettable, the one that everyone's eyeing. You are an awesome friend, and so magnificent, and there's just no denying. Loves it, and Richard sings it to her. She's like, "Hi, Vivian, if you're watching, couldn't resist." Thank you. Okay, uh, we'd like to take a moment to welcome anyone who is new to Unity Renaissance. If you're here today for the first, second, or third time, we invite you to raise your hand nice and high. Hold up the appropriate number of fingers. One for your first visit, two for your second visit, three for your third. Our ushers are bringing a gift for you—a little Come gift here. bag. We have one in the back. We one, two, or three. Here, Some over here. Be patient, be patient as they come near, get your hands up nice and high and they will, there we go, excellent. And you'll find in that uh, bag there's a little card, if you fill that card out, take it into the bookstore, we have yet another gift for you there. So welcome, we're so happy you're here with us and we look forward to seeing you again and again. Welcome and keep coming back. <laughs> now, um, so Don Bennett and Sam Kongpong are launching. Hands. Yes. Right there, <laughs> two of them, woo! You know, they are launching a new recovery support group entitled Investing Love. So 7 p.m. on Tuesday night here at the YOU group room. It's going to start this Tuesday, September 13th, and it's going to focus on applying proven strategies to move from the feeling of unlove to the feelings of worthiness and and love. Yeah. You know, and that will be applied through giving and receiving love and being in a sacred space with the people in the room those very nights. It is not by appointment. You don't have to show, you don't have to sign up. You just have to show up. So whatever Tuesdays at 7 p.m. that your heart calls you to be there and receive and be a part of this magical moment, you can come. So starting this. The YOU room, for those, oh, excuse me. I don't go ahead, go ahead. Cover, I, you're, you're good. Where's okay. the room? Yeah, the YOU room, <laughs> in case you don't know. So uh, you go down the hall here past the bathrooms, turn left down the education wing hall. It's all the way to the end of the hall on the left-hand side. But there'll be other people around to show you where that is. Uh, but thank you to Don and Sam for bringing that to us. Well, one of my favorite services of the year is coming up on Saturday, October 1st, our annual pet blessing, as sweet as it could possibly be. And uh, we just have a great old time. It, it's, we are flexible when we do this service uh, because of the things that happen there. But it's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking of Thedia. I was thinking of Thedia when she fell over backwards. You know that last year when her dog ran and <laughs> she fell over backwards? But anyway, okay. <laughs> so, so, um, but do bring your, uh, your pet and uh, bring them in uh, a carrier if you would be so kind or on a leash. Uh, if your pet has made their transition, you may bring a photo. We'll honor them on a special table there. We'll put uh, photos out there. Just a really sweet service, a very brief little service. And uh, so we have treats for the animals. And then I go around and bless each of them individually, give them a little certificate. So if you can join us, that's at 10 a.m. Uh, on Saturday. That's I'll cute. give the owner a certificate. Anyway, uh, Saturday, October 1st, and it's right out in the grassy area just outside the fellowship hall. And uh, with that, I'd like to bring up Christopher Naughton, who has uh, 
announcement for us. Exciting. Uh, first I have to say, can we get this one? There we go. Thank you. I have to first say, don't you feel a little taller after hearing Paula's talk and Richard's music today? Ah. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like I'm at least six inches taller. I hope you feel the same way. And I hope you feel the same way with this course that we're going to bring, be bringing to you in about a week and a half. So I have a few questions for you. Do you think your brain creates your consciousness? Do you think that um, your consciousness survives bodily death? Are we ready for a new revolution in consciousness? Now, last year, we took a look at mind blow, the mind-blowing nature of consciousness, the, the great discoveries of life, death, and consciousness. And we talked about near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences, the life review, reincarnation, and how it really demonstrates who we really are and how we relate to one another. Well, starting Wednesday, September 21st, we're going to take it a step further. And I've got six great guests who are going to be joining us. And George, if you've got that it's, graphic up there, we can pop it's, it's it up there, kind of, hopefully. It, it, we put it in, but it's not showing It's up. not showing up. And okay, I well, I can, I can talk. Let me just talk about some of the folks. You're not going to, if you go online, you'll see their faces. Oh, there they are. There they are. There they are. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you, you're imagining this, but it's working, see? <laughs> Now, Jeffrey Mishlov is probably a name you've never heard of. It's unfortunate that a lot of Americans have never heard of him, because over the many years, He's been one of the foremost studiers of consciousness and some of the more esoteric elements of consciousness. In fact, he's the first American to ever get a parapsychology degree from a university. And some of the skeptics really didn't like the fact that he was dispensing some of this information. So they libeled him, and he sued them in court and won a million dollars. Also, last year, Jeffrey didn't have to sue anyone to win the very first a prize for the Bigelow contest where he won a half million dollars for having the most compelling evidence as to why our consciousness survives our bodily death. Mm -hmm. Now you may say, well, why is that so important for what we're doing right now? Well, Jeffrey likes to say <laughs> that humanity will evolve once it begins to understand and comes to grip with the notion that our consciousness survives our body, that it's not relegated to this cranium. And that opens up whole new avenues. And what we're hoping with this course that's going to start a week from Wednesday is that it's going to take us to places where we can find greater inner peace, where we can help create unity in a very divisive world, where we can believe in a much brighter future. Some of the other names, Alan Cohen has been here before, as has Mitch Horowitz. They're some of the leading voices regarding alternative spirituality in the nation. Helena Wabe is the director of research for the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which was the organization started by Edgar Mitchell, the astronaut, after he walked on the moon, came back to Earth, and he had an epiphany, and he started Noetic Sciences. Also, Stefan Schwartz, amazing man, he's one of the first remote viewers for the United States government. You know, uh, they did a lot of work into finding out where some of the Russian missile silos were and things such of that nature. He parlayed that into the 2050 and 2060 projects. In the 1970s, his remote viewers actually showed that, for example, the Soviet Union would break apart. And they were like, really? How is that even possible? Well, now he's got the 2060 project. And those remote viewers go into the future. It would be interesting to share that. The nice thing about this course is not only do you get to hear some great speakers, you get to interact with them. And you get to join us here in the room. It's great when we have people here in the room, but you can join by Zoom. And if you miss any classes at all, they'll be available by video thereafter. Again, it starts Wednesday, September the 21st. You can go to unityrenaissance.org to sign up or christophernaughton.com. Uh, the, uh, the, courses, the, course, the series run about 90 minutes each time for those four weeks. But I hope you'll join us. Uh, Susan Blackmore, the great psychologist, said studying consciousness will change your life. I promise you the series will do that. Oh, nice. Woo! What a great lineup. can hardly wait. Thank you, Christopher. Really powerful stuff happening here, man. You know, um, so we are greatly in need of additional support and help with our hospitality team. Those are the people who feed us after service and bring us a smile and help clean up, and we love them and appreciate them greatly. We need more of them. 
So if you could volunteer on a Sunday, just one Sunday a week would make a tremendous difference. A month. Diff uh, month, I'm sorry. <laughs> one Sunday a week, you know, hey, there's at least one of them in there. Sorry about that. <laughs> so one Sunday a month would be really helpful. You know, um, talk to Tammy Frisk or Wait, Tammy. Tammy. There's Tammy. You know, or her email is up there, tfrisk1 yes. at verizon.com. Sorry, Fisk. That's good. Fisk. You got Sorry, it. Tammy. Thanks. So I just want to add on to this. Uh, first of all, T Tammy's done an incredible job heading up hospitality. Uh, she, she does the work of multiple people back there. She's built a really great team, but it, it, we definitely have felt the impact of COVID, and we need to beef that team up. And I would really like to invite you, I want you, each and every one to think about this, to be of service to this community. This is an easy way to do it. It's a simple and very rewarding way to do it. And uh, really think hard about, isn't it your turn to step up and give back, and possibly in that way, and see Tammy if you can. And thank you again, Tammy. Well, next week we will have a guest speaker here, the wonderful Reverend Quintina Harris, who's yeah. never spoken at Uni yeah. Renaissance before. Yeah. It's only taken a year or so of cajoling to get her up here, but she will be speaking on Be Still and Know. And I also want to throw in here that two weeks from today, I will be speaking on Why Community Matters. And I really want to issue a very special invitation to all of you to be here, uh, because that's going to be a celebration of you. So uh, that's it for the announcements. And now Ed Rosequist is going to do a kind of a special little mini presentation for us on the proposed land use plan. I think I'll go sit. Good morning, my Unity family. Great to be here and, and see you all. I represent the Facilities Improvement Committee. Uh, we've been very busy in the past working on the facility itself, uh, but we're getting beyond that. We report to the Board of Trustees uh, in areas of advancing not just the building, but also the grounds. I'm going to talk a little bit about the property expansion uh, uh, property project that we want to talk about in our future, which really is about the vision. Uh, we do have four acres here. We have almost uh, 13,000 square feet in the facility. Remember the original facilities, uh, the square building, including this sanctuary, was around 7,500 square feet, and we've added uh, 7,000 or uh, 5,000 with the addition. Um, new kitchen was part of the original structure, along with uh, new bathrooms, but all the extra wing down the side is uh, around 5,200 square feet. Uh, with that, we've got 74 parking spaces out in the, woo. Okay. Um, so this is a big, little bit bigger picture than the overall. This is the full four Keep acres. Up. We've got the parking spaces here. Of those, we're going to have the parking lot resurfaced uh, this Friday. So a big, big addition and restriped. We're going to add two more uh, handicapped spa spots with that to give us eight. And then remember, we've got the uh, office space over here. We have a 10-year agreement that we're just about to re-sign with them that has 120 parking spaces. So please use those spaces over in the office complex uh, it's a nice little walk over, and it gives other people and new, new people that have never been here before a place to park in our, our normal parking spot. But as you can see, we have quite a bit of green space in the back. Uh, our proposal here that we've talked about with the uh, uh, board is to make this kind of the kids' play area and this area here, eventually get to kind of a clearing, potentially kind of an outdoor classroom type thing uh, in this area right here. Um, and again, developing the, uh, uh, basically the parking lot a little bit more as we get it resurfaced, not really resurfaced, but really resealed. Uh, our main lighting in the parking lot is a single light pole here. We're looking in our near term to add a couple solar lights uh, down in the south end of the parking lot just to, to bring a little bit more visibility, a little more security into the uh, parking lot itself. Um, as you can see, this is a little bit blow up, and again, here's the kids' play area. The, the swings, swings are right here. The big pipe is right here, which we're getting repainted, and we're going to do some work on that. And eventually, we'll add some slides and some kind of treehouse areas over in the trees that are along the fence line. And you can see, again, here is where we propose to put in two uh, lights in our future just to kind of advance that that. So I do want to say that uh, I really appreciate all the work 
that the uh, facilities team has done and uh, a lot of great folks have, have helped. I mean, Reverend Paula, along with Lee Pennypacker and Jim Hudson, Star Janicki was huge in, in making sure the form of the addition fit, fit uh, Ed's function, uh, <laughs> which was kind of interesting. But Jan Schoenborn's help, Valerie Winters, Susan Lang, it's been, a, it's been a great effort around developing the building. Now we need to keep looking ahead and say, how do we see the property and how do we continue to, to develop that? So I'll be out in the narthex after the service. Uh, Jim has kind of this plan as well as Lee Pennypacker. So if you have any questions, if you have any insights or ideas or any of those kind of things, please come to us. We've got a nice big long list of to-do things that we're trying to get done uh, and make sure that it's a cohesive plan, that we're not doing things that later on we need to deconstruct um, so that it's all cohesive and we're working together. So again, appreciate everybody and thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, let's stand now and welcome our children. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of light of God. We are walking, walking. We are walking, walking. We are walking in the light of light of God. We are walking, walking. We are walking, walking. We are walking in the light of. Light of God, we are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of light of God. We are walking, walking. We are walking, walking. We are walking in the light of light of God. We are walking, walking. We are walking, walking. We are walking in the light of God. the love offering from our young people bless your sweethearts you help make us who we are in so many ways so thank you very very much we'll put this down here thank you who would like to share what you learned today yes Sienna um, today at class we stood up dominoes and when one person touched the table all the dominoes fell down that shows how if one person says or does something, it can affect everyone around them. Yeah. All right. The domino effect illustrated. Yes. Yes. I'm responsible for my choices. I'm responsible for my choices. Hello, CJ. Say what you put out. A put out. Comes back. Put out comes back. What you put out there comes back. Beautiful. Oh, we have a, and here's the demonstration of that. Yes. I'll be right back, sweetie. You shouldn't make choices are bad. They're bad. You shouldn't make bad choices. Come on up here, sweetheart. We learned about Rumpelstiltskin today. You did? We learned about. We, we learned about Rumpelstiltskin, lots of hair in that story. We learn in my heart, I know what is right for me. In my heart, I know what is right for me. Ah, so much wisdom, you guys. Did you have something, Grayson? Or are you just kind of waving? Coming up, sweetie. Can you let her through? Don't make bad choices. Don't make bad choices. That one got through today. Yes, uh, come on around this way. And what is your name? Courtney. We learned about peacemaking and walking away from situations. Oh, I love that. <laughs> learned about peacemaking and walking away from situations. Love it. Something else? <laughs> come on up here, darling. Uh, we talked about, like, walking away from situations, like, not, like, going to people and like instigating stuff yeah because you know like if you instigate and stuff it hypes people up more that's very wise be a peacemaker be a peacemaker 
All right, beautiful, beautiful lessons today. Thank you to Anna and B for what you're teaching, all the teachers, what you're teaching our kids. We have a teacher appreciation lunch today, so I want to say how grateful we are for our many teachers here at Uni Renaissance. Here's the proof of the difference you're making, so thank you. Let's stand together now for our prayer for protection, followed by our peace song. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. <laughs> was meant to be with God as creator family all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now with every step I take let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let Star. 